shiny outside. It is a, a cool 36 degrees out today. Might be able to see my breath a little bit there. A little cooler in the garage uh, just because it's been shut up, but warm enough to come out and fire up a cigar. So without further ado, today we're going to be uh, reviewing something from the lower end of the spectrum. Um, so this is a Quorum, I believe that's how you pronounce it, Quorum Classic. So this is the Classic Blend. Um, I believe they come in a Classic, a Maduro, and a Shade, I believe. So a Classic, a Shade, and then a Maduro. Um, so this is the Classic, just natural wrapper. Um, I don't remember how much I paid for this one. I want to say it was only a couple dollars for a single. Um... So these are blended to be basically your classic bundle cigar, something on a little cheaper end, something that's supposed to be like a daily smoker, a yard gar, something like that. So, um, so I did do some homework for you guys. So the Quorum Classic um, comes in, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different sizes, uh, actually six sizes, seven different shapes. We'll get to that in just a second. Um, so it comes in a double Gordo, which is a 6x60, a big old fat boy. Um, the Toro, which is the 6x50. The Torpedo, which is also a 6x50, but it has that tapered end on the, on the, um, on the cap there. Um, the Corona, which is what I have here today, which is a 5.5x43, so a little skinny mini. Um, which works out just good because we actually have to go to work here in about an hour or so. Um, the Robusto, of course, four and three quarter by 50, which seems a little strange to me. I think they adjusted that size just a little bit um, from your standard Robusto, that is. Um, and then something called the Tres Petit Corona, which is four and a half by 38. So it would be an inch shorter than this and a smaller ring gauge yet. And I don't know if you can see that. I should probably take the plastic off, to be honest, so we can get a better look at this here. Um, so I don't know if you can kind of see the ring gauge on that or not, but uh, so it would be a little bit smaller than this, and you'd be losing about an inch on the length as well. Um, and then last but not least, the short Robusto, which is a three and a half by 50. Um, so I didn't really find too much along the lines of pricing for these, um, but if I can remember correctly from the few B&Ms I've gone to, looking at a bundle, usually comes in a bundle of 20, um, you're looking at least a dollar per stick. So about 20 bucks, 25 bucks, something like that um, for a bundle of them. So very cheap, um, but supposed to be decent tobacco. So let's take a look at this here. It's very lumpy and bumpy. Um, to me, it's uh, what I would call rustic looking. Um, can't really tell probably too much on the camera because I can't really focus a whole lot. But it's got lots of veins in it, lumps and bumps. You can kind of see the striping from how they put the wrapper on. Um, the end of it does look like it has a slight box press on the foot. Um, but it is not a box press cigar. So that could just be from packaging. I do kind of like the band. Um, the band is a nice black. This is Quorum with their classic Q insignia, handmade Nicaraguan. Kind of cool, gold striping on it. It's got that nice barnyard smell. <laughs> kind of like a horse farm, like a manure, like a manure and hay kind of smell to it on the wrapper anyway. Very sweet on the foot. Comparable to like a, almost like sweet and chocolatey or like a sweet graham cracker kind of smell. It's kind of interesting. Um, so a couple more little facts here for you before we dive into this. Wrapper is a Sumatra Sun Grown. Um, the binder in this is Nicaraguan, and the filler is also Nicaraguan. So I almost called it a Nicaraguan Puro when I was writing my notes. Um, however, I believe with the Sumatra wrapper, that makes it not quite a Puro. So, um, But mostly Nicaraguan tobacco, so I'm expecting earthy, a little spicy, um, and more than likely the spice is going to be like that black pepper flavor. So we'll see with that. I am pleased to know that there's a Sumatra wrapper um, because I am a big fan of Sumatra tobacco. 
So hopefully that wrapper will give us a, a nice flavor. So let's go ahead and get this cut. Um, we'll light it up and we'll get Chuck. All right, so I had to adjust the camera a little bit. I wasn't too fond of the uh, portrait view there. Um, wasn't really digging that, so. Of course, today we're going to be using the old... Oh, excuse me. My nose is itching a little bit today, if anyway. Of course, today we're going to be using the old trusty Zycar double guillotine. Just the cap, of course. <laughs> Call the draw. Absolutely no pepper spice. I'm just getting like a sweet tobacco flavor. Not much on the cold draw. Um, today I'm going to be using a single jet Firebird. Um, just because this is a smaller Corona size cigar and I don't want to singe the tip too much. Uh, let's see here. Adjust the flame just a little bit there. All right. Let's get it lit. So initial flavors that we're getting off the light here, um, it does have that nice dark pepper um, zing to it, or dark pepper, black pepper rather. It's got that nice black pepper zing in there um, from the Nicaraguan tobacco, of course. Pretty warm on the nasal passages on the retro. You got some deep earth... Um, or sorry, not deep earth, some deep woody notes in there. So some cedar, definitely. Um, like a slight earthiness. It's not too bad. Predominant flavor right now is the pepper. Um, and it's not overbearing pepper. Um, it kind of lingers uh, on the tongue and kind of on the roof of the mouth a little bit. Um, it's kind of creeping its way towards the back of my throat, um, but not terrible. It's kind of spicy. Pepper's kind of building a little bit with each puff that I take. I don't know if that's just because it's accumulating in my mouth or what the deal is. Um, so just a couple of notes here for you. Um, so the Quorum line is a line from J.C. Newman. Um, it comes from his Pensa factory. Um, so this is, I guess, what they're saying. This is the number one selling imported handmade bundle cigar in the world. Um, which is fascinating because that means it's not just limited to, you know, certain areas, certain shops. It's a global deal that he does with this. So definitely very mass produced. Um, it's supposed to have a medium body. Um, it's available in three blends, the classic, the Maduro, and the shade grown. So I was right about that. Awesome. Um, so apparently the J.C. Newman family is the oldest family of cigar makers in America. Um, it's founded in 1895 by Julius Caesar Newman, hence the J.C. Newman brand. Um, it is also the oldest premium cigar maker in America. Um, so not only are they the oldest family-owned cigar maker, they are the oldest premium cigar maker here in America. Um, so four generations, it says, for 124 years is how long this has been going on. Um, for 109 years, um, they've had their factory in Ybor City 
in the National Historic Landmark District of Tampa, Florida. Um, so that's kind of interesting. But the Pensa Factory, which is where the Quorum brand is rolled, um, is the second largest uh, cigar rolling factory in Nicaragua. In Nicaragua. Wow, I can't talk today. Um, so the Pensa Factory, which is where they blended this cigar, where they rolled it, um, second largest in Nicaragua. Um, and then the same Pensa factory that rolls the Quorum brand also ro rolls uh, other brands such as Brickhouse, Perla Del Mar, and El Baton. So, interesting. Um, so something to kind of compare it to, the Quorum brand is rolled same area, same place, same factory as Brickhouse. So I've had one Brickhouse, I think it was the Brickhouse Maduro, that I tried. Um, if I recall correctly, I wasn't a big fan of that one. Um, so we'll see how this goes and roll the sleeves down a little bit of a chill out here today hmm. I just like a slight uh, I don't know what that was. There's a different flavor in there just for a second The draw on it is um, very good, actually. It's it's not too loose, not too tight. It's like right there in the middle, so that's good. Let me jot down some notes real here. So starting to come up on the retro now, that pepper is really kind of falling in there. And um, it's not so spicy on the retro hail itself, um, but it kind of builds, the finish kind of builds with it. And right now on the retro, I'm starting to get what I would say is almost like a toasted graham cracker note, which is interesting. I don't think I've ever had that in a cigar before. So we're not doing a whole lot today, family. Um, like I said, I got to go in to work for a few hours here. Just for four hours, not too bad. Kind of, well, careful of the ash drop. Uh, that just dropped off and we weren't even at an inch yet. So um, the burn is also starting to kind of get a little wonky. So we're going to touch that up a little bit. Um, what was it about to say? Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, doing a little bit of OT today. We got some stuff at work that's not exactly running up to par, so we're going to have to pay, play a little catch-up this week, I think. But, uh, okay. It doesn't matter. Just kind of hanging out. Mama and the kids done took off to go to Grandma's house. Gonna go do a little shopping today, get some deals. 
So I decided I was going to have me a little cigar and do a review before I go to work. So that pepper finish, um, it's still kind of lingering in the back of my throat and in my mouth. Um, but it is starting to get a little less harsh. Um, so that's a good thing. It's still there. The flavor is still there. But the, uh, the harshness, the, the punch of that, uh, that spice, or that black pepper rather, is not uh, as prominent. The draw is still good. Um, I can see this is going to be one of those cigars where if you don't keep it going, it's liable to go out on you. Um, smoke output just from resting, not terrible. You get a decent amount of smoke output on the draw. So that's good. Um, and it's like a light and wafty smoke. It's not a heavy smoke. Still got those cedar notes in there with the black pepper, which is the predominant flavor in this one, I think. Um, you can kind of taste that toasted graham cracker that I mentioned kind of in the finish a little bit. Um, but that black pepper is just the predominant thing. I think it, it gives you a blast up front and just kind of coats your mouth. So, it's a good thing I brought a beverage with me. Today, we are drinking Body Armor, the uh, knockout punch. Found these. These are pretty good. Sponsored by the UFC. Um, good for you. It's got natural flavors and sweeteners, electrolytes, coconut water, all your B vitamins that you need for the day. Actually, more than you need for the day. It's got 300% of your uh, daily B vitamins and 150% of vitamin A, C, and E. So uh, definitely good for you. Fruit juice, right? For those of you watching your carb count, probably not the greatest. 18 grams of carbs per serving, and there's three and a half servings in this big old jug. So not good for you keto folks, but good enough for me. So the ash is definitely um, very flaky. Looking at it up close, I can see like um, what I call like little pinholes. They're not holes, but like little pinholes. It almost looks like braille in the uh, in the ash, which usually signifies to me that it's going to be a light and flaky ash, which obviously we're not even in, an inch in here. Well, we're almost an inch in now, but when the first ash drop happened, we weren't even at an inch yet. So definitely be wary of that. So I'm going to jot a few more things down in the old trusty journal. Um... I'm going to smoke on this a little bit, guys, and I will be back. Hang tight. So just a side note here. Um, <clears throat> in my review for the Factory Smokes Maduro, I mentioned that I was going to try and find the other blends. Um, I was able to find a sampler on Thompson Cigar. On their website, they had a sampler for like $7 where you got one of each in a Toro size. And I was thinking to myself, wow, that's almost too good to be true, right? It's the Toro size that I know and love, and uh, I've got one of each blend. That'd be nice for the review sesh, you know. Um, so I went ahead and threw it in the cart and uh, put my information in, logged in like I did before, and uh, put in my card info, and when I went to hit purchase, it told me that it couldn't process my payments. So, and I know it's not my card or my bank. So I guess to me, that's kind of an omen, um, and I'll tell you why. To me, that tells me I'm probably not going to go through with that deal um, just because I do have a review on my page of um, I had bought a sampler pack of nubs from uh, Thompson. I was pretty pleasant, uh, pretty pleased rather with the packaging style and all that good stuff. Nothing wrong there. Price is good, definitely. Um, shipping was great, um, but some of the nubs uh, weren't that good. Um, all the regular ones, like there was a Sumatra and a Connecticut and a Maduro, those were all fine. Um, but they had a nub version of the Oliva, I believe it's Oliva Hellion and the Devil's Dew. Um, the Devil's Dew, if I remember correctly, were okay. The Hellions, um, I believe I did a review on those and one of them was kind of eh. And then the other one, um, 
we, uh, oh, that's what it was. I was uh, smoking with a friend, so he took one, I took one, um, and we ended up opening mine because I wasn't, so I was very displeased with it. Um, so I ended up putting it out, kind of cut it open just to inspect what was in the inside, and there was nothing but a bunch of short filler and what looked like floor scrapings and a bunch of stems. <laughs> so that, that was kind of off-putting for me. Um, not that I'm so much opposed to ordering from Thompson. I mean, if I, they do the, 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 they do the five pack fever. Um, for those of you who don't know what that is, it means you get, uh, if you buy, f uh, five, five packs of cigars, you get another one for free, I believe is the deal, or you buy four, you get a fifth one free, whatever it is. Um, but the five pack fever, if you buy X amount of five packs, they give you one for free. So, I mean, I guess that's a good deal. They do run good deals there. Um, but that, the experience with the Hellion just kind of put me off a little bit, I think. So today when I went to make that purchase and it didn't go through, to me, that's kind of a sign. You know, I'm into this kind of stuff. Maybe you're not, um, but that was kind of a sign to me saying, eh, maybe you should just wait and get them from somewhere else. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait on that. Sometimes, guys, if uh, the deal seems too good to be true, it usually is, right? So... Okay, so uh, we're well within the first inch, inch and a half or so. Um, I did tip the ash off one more time because I didn't feel like getting it all over my lap again. Um, and it came off fairly easy. So definitely be wary of that if you get these quorums. Um, the ash seems to be very flaky and um, very not really loose, um, but it's very flaky. It flakes off very quickly. So just be careful with that if you don't like getting ash in your lap. Um, I did have to touch up the burn the one time. I can see it's getting kind of a coastline on it again, so we might end up having to touch it up again. But for a cheap bundle cigar, I mean, stuff like that can be expected, right? Um, so right now, the, bo uh, the body on it is definitely a medium body. Um, that pepper finish is starting to fade away just a little bit. It's still there on the retro and all that. You can still get the blast of pepper, um, but the finish on the back of your mouth and on your tongue and stuff is kind of fading away now, so that's that's good. Um, as far as the strength goes, I would say it's about medium strength. It's not overpowering, um, but you can definitely tell that there's nicotine on it. I did have a small piece of the cap. So this looks like a, at very least, it's going to be a double cap. It might even be a triple cap. Um, but I did have a small piece of the cap that was starting to kind of unravel up here. Um, so I just lick it and stick it. Kind of stuck it back down again. It seems to be doing just fine now. So Construction-wise, uh, so far so good. I mean, we had the one little issue with the burn and then the, the cap thing, but nothing I'm really going to dock points for, I guess. Still getting pretty good smoke output. Um, again, not too much smoke coming off of it as it rests. However, uh, you do get a decent amount of smoke on the draw, so that's that's nice. Still getting that pepper in there with the cedar. Um, there's like a slight that graham cracker, that toasted graham cracker, has kind of evolved into like a some sort of a floral note. Can't quite put my finger on what that is yet, though. And maybe even like a slight medicinal flavor in there. So that toasted graham cracker is still in there. At least on the retro, you get it um, like a fleeting hint of that. Let's see if I can roll this ash off here again. Yeah. So not super, not super tight in there. It's kind of flaky. And so it's cigars like these that is the reason why I like using the straight cut. Because um, I think what I'm going to end up having to do here soon with this is to do a recut and purge. Um, I don't know if you can see that very well, but it's starting to get kind of uh, tarry, if you will. The 
smoke passing through, um, sometimes if there's a lot of tar in the tobacco and just the oils from the tobacco kind of get gathered on the head there, um, which is why I like to do a recut, do the purge and kind of get that out of there. Another thing that does when it starts gathering on the head like that, it kind of prohibits your draw a little bit, um, kind of weakens the draw. And by recutting that, I can open that draw back up. So let's see if that happens or not. And when you do the recut, you don't want to take a whole lot off. Um, again, because you'll risk compromising the structural integrity. So you can kind of see here, this is what I cut off of it, right? I can't get the camera to focus that good. So this is what I cut off of it. And you can see that's a little bit darker. And then what I have left on the head here is a bit lighter than that. So definitely took off some of that oil and stuff on the end. So we'll see if that opens up the draw a little bit. tobacco on the tongue there. So that did open up the draw a little bit more. A lot more actually. So the draw is nice and open again. Um, I don't necessarily know if I'm going to do a purge with this one or not. Um, we'll give it a little bit longer and we'll see. Right now I'd say we're approaching on about halfway. We're almost uh, about an inch and a half away from the band. So, I have had one quorum previous to this. I don't particularly remember what kind it was, what blend or whatever, or even what size for that matter. I remember it being a smaller one, and I also remember not liking it that much. This one, comparably to what I do remember of the last one, this one's a little bit better, so maybe it's a different blend I had. Who knows? So after that cut, that pepper is starting to ramp up just a little bit more again. So I wonder if that might have something to do with uh, the draw itself. Once the draw starts kind of getting constricted a little bit, I wonder if the uh, the flavor from that uh, that pepper flavor kind of gets drowned out. About a half hour into this smoke, um, and that's just going back looking at the video. So we're actually probably more like 20, 25 minutes. So not a terribly long smoke. Um, and as you can see, this burn's getting a little off again. So we're going to go ahead and touch that up a little bit. Maybe. If the lighter will work. I like this little single jet. Um, doesn't hold the greatest amount of tobacco, or pff, doesn't hold the greatest amount of tobacco, doesn't hold the greatest amount of fluid in it, rather. Well, sometimes you gotta fuss with it a little bit. So far, I'm not getting like a bitterness from this, um, so we're not gonna do the purge. But that recut definitely helped a little. And this is what I was talking about with the cap. That little flaggy that's hanging off there. Yeah, we're just going to lick it and stick it. It's whatever. Um, I would definitely say at this point that this is not going to be um, like an everyday smoke for me. I'm not enjoying it that much. Um, but I would consider this a nice yard gar or something. If you're going to go out and cut the grass, it'll tide you over. Not terribly strong. Um, it's definitely got that pepper in there again after the recut. Um, tickles the nasal passages quite well. 
Um, after the cut, it's more of a nasal thing. It's not really coating the back of my tongue or anything anymore. So that might just be a pepper blast up front. There was probably a nice bit of lajero um, in the front uh, of the foot there. So. Something else to kind of keep in mind, um, especially when it comes to these bundle cigars, I have found, and there's a lot of other reviewers that will say, that the flavor notes and the intensities that you get from a cigar can change by what size you're smoking. Um, so being that this is a Corona, a little bit smaller size, if you were to go up to say a, a Toro or even at the most extreme, the 6x60, the Double Gordo, um, you might find some different flavors. I do know from um, experience that the 6x60s tend to burn a lot slower um, just because of the sheer size of it. There's more tobacco in it. It takes longer for it all to burn. So um, that might be a good thing. That might be a bad thing. Um, where I'm at with this one right now, I don't think I would get anything over a Robusto or a Torpedo or a, a Toro size. Anything bigger than that, I don't think I would get too much more enjoyment out of. Um, and the only reason why I would go from, say, a Corona to a Toro or a Robusto would be if I wanted it to last a little bit longer. Which at this point is not a necessity for me. Still got good smoke output. Definitely got that nice cedar note in there still. Um, and it's kind of transitioning into almost like a creamy cedar. And of course that pepper. And I think the combination of the creamy cedar with that black pepper finish um, is what creates kind of like a floral note. Interesting. The more cigars I smoke, the more I can kind of see, I think I, I mentioned something in it in one of my last reviews about leather, how um, the combination of two flavors is what makes that leather flavor. So some of the flavors you get from cigars might not necessarily mean that, yes, it tastes like leather or that particular flavor is there. It might just be a combination of the two that re reminds your senses of something else that you're familiar with. The band is kind of nice. I'm going to go ahead and take the band off and kind of show that here real quick. It's a very simple band, um, but sometimes simple things are very nice. So something else to be wary of with taking the band off. I don't know if you can see that light spot right there. Again, the camera's not too good. I apologize. On the back of the band, we actually took a little piece of the wrapper off with it. So be wary of that. Um, but the band itself is actually kind of decent. It's a nice black finish. Um, quorum insignia. Um, there's a little bit of like a burgundy color in there with the lettering. It's kind of nice. It's got a nice sheen to it. I save all my bands, or at least I try to. Um, and then I do projects with them. The background that I use for intro outro um, is actually a collage that I made with a lot of the rapper or bands rather um, that I had, and I've got a bunch more, so there's more to come on that. So it's an okay smoke. I don't think it would be an everyday, like I said. Um, but it's definitely something to pick up if you need uh, a stockpile of, say, extra smokes for friends that don't necessarily smoke cigars. And maybe you're having a poker night or something and you want everybody to be able to kind of relate on something. Um, it'd be good for that. It'd be good for a yard guard if you're out doing some yard work. You just want something to kind of smoke on a little bit. The Corona size... Um, the 43 ring gauge it feels nice in the mouth. I know that's weird to say, but it feels nice in the mouth. Um, it's not too big, not too small, just right.
I'm more of a fan of like a 50 or a 52 ring gauge, but 43 does it. Yeah, there's not a whole lot going on here, guys. So, I'm going to put my numbers down, get that all situated for you guys, and uh, I'll be back to give you my final rating and my final... Okay, guys, so it's not getting any warmer out here. Actually, it feels to me like it's getting a little chillier, um, which makes sense because the sun will be going down here in a couple hours or so. However, um, I have set the cigar down. I am done with that. Um, this is about as far as I made it. You got about two inches or so left. Um... That's not something I'm going to smoke all the way down to the end. So, uh, for me, it was an okay cigar. Um, like I said, decent yard gar, something you're going to just kind of hang on to and smoke whenever. Um, definitely not a special occasion type of thing, but being a cheap bundle cigar, it is what it is, right? It kind of tells you what you're going to know. Um, so, I'll go ahead and give you the numbers for the price. I'm going to give it a three. It's pretty average. Um, like I said, I wasn't really able to deduce a certain price per stick. Um, and I looked up bundles, you're looking at about 20 to $25 a bundle. So for 20 cigars, you're paying like a buck, buck 50, somewhere in there per stick. Buying them in singles, you might pay a little bit more. I think for this particular one, I might have paid like 250 or something. So average price for something like that, or at least average price for what I got out of it, right? So I'm going to give it an average on the price. Price is three. Construction, I'm going to go ahead and give it a three, just average. Um, it's decent construction. However, we did have, and I know I said I wasn't going to dock points, but I did have that slight um, issue with the cap where uh, the cap was starting to unravel a couple times on me. Uh, we did have to do a relight, or not a relight, but we did have to touch up the burn twice uh, just because it was starting to canoe a little bit or tunnel a little bit. Um, so average on the construction. Average on the flavor, too, unfortunately. Um, it's got a couple of decent flavors in there, the pepper and the cedar being the predominant one. Um, with the cedar kind of coming around like a creamy cedar type of thing. Um, but nothing too spectacular. So overall experience, I'm going to give it a two and a half. It's kind of eh, it's whatever. Um, like I said, it's something that you're just going to want to, you know, haul out when you got a poker game or something. You got some buddies that don't like to smoke or uh, you want to give somebody an idea of like what your run-of-the-mill cigar kind of tastes like. That would be what you'd probably give them. Um, so that's cheapy, but it's okay. Um, so that brings our overall score to 2.8 out of 5. It's got a 2.8. So lower end of the spectrum. Um, would I smoke it again? Maybe if I wanted a cheap smoke. Um, but I know a lot of cigars that I can buy for a little bit more. So for 5 bucks, I mean, I can get a punch or a Oliva of some sort, maybe for 5, 5.50 ish, um, depending on the size. And I would rather pay that than to pay $2.50 for this. So. Definitely not my uh, my uh, pick of the day, if you will, but uh, I don't know. Give it a shot. If you're looking for a cheap bundle, you know, just to kind of hang on to for non-special occasions, that might be the one. Um, I have been in the one of the local shops around here, Cigar Ambassador. I have seen a few guys come in, and they'll get a whole bundle, more than likely to bring them home, throw them in the humidor for a while just to hang on to, more than likely for a yard guard or something like that. Or maybe some people just, uh, they like that um, cheaper run-of-the-mill cigar. Um, so just a quick note on these. Um, I, do, I didn't write it down. I don't know why, but I do remember when I was looking up um, stuff, information on this cigar in particular. It does say that some are hand-rolled. It does say that some are machine-rolled. Um, for this one, I'm, I'm guessing it's probably machine-rolled. The uh, cigar itself feels pretty stiff. Um, so that, I mean, some hand rolled cigars say that they're stiff and the band does say handmade. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not machine rolled, but who really knows? Um, so again, Quorum Classic Corona QCC, Quorum Classic Corona. Say that five times fast. Um, average run of the mill cigar, nothing too spectacular. Would I try it in a different size? Maybe, maybe a Robusto. I would definitely try, um, so this is the classic. I would be interested in trying uh, maybe a Maduro. The Maduro might end up being a little bit sweeter maybe. Um, and then the 
shade grown perhaps uh, because the classic has the sun grown um, wrapper, the Sumatran sun grown wrapper. Um, shade grown might offer a little bit of a different flavor profile, so I'd be interested in trying the other blends for sure. So maybe we'll have to keep an eye out for those if they're pretty, which they are pretty cheap. Um, maybe I'll pick up one of each and we'll kind of do a full round on this one. So, okay, guys, that's it for me. I got to go in. I got some laundry I got to take care of real quick, uh, get ready for work and head on out. And my fingers are getting a little chilly too. So, uh, hopefully everybody's having a great day. Um, every day is a great day for me. And to prove it to you, my shirt even says so. Having another great day. You want one of these? You can get them from uh, Brother Lee Mac. He also does reviews. Uh, you can check him out on YouTube as well. He goes under Lee Mac 912 912. Um, and I'll put that up on the screen for you so uh, you can get the spelling correct on that one. It's spelled how it sounds. But uh, check him out. He does a lot of really good reviews. Um, and he's definitely a, a better video maker than I am. That's for sure. But I'm working on it. So, All right, guys. You have a good one.